What's going on everybody? It's been a minute, but I'm back. I've got my handy dandy knife and a handy dandy box with the special mark of the gods. Oh yeah. We're gonna do an unboxing from CGC. That's right, everybody. It's your boy, James, a.k.a. Comics for Cheap, a.k.a. why they release Bill Cosby. I don't know. Who knows? Doesn't matter. <laughs> but we're back here with another rendition of hashtag send it to James. That's where I take a group of books that someone sent me to submit, clean to press them, send them to CGC. They come back. I unbox them for you before sending them on their way. Uh, more and more recently, though, I've been able to actually send them directly from CGC to customers. So that's been uh really what has been going on uh recently that's why i haven't been doing these videos as much anymore which is good they get them straight to them we can cut out a little bit of shipping or uh hand delivering or anything like that which is awesome if you have any questions about what i do cleaning and pressing wise hit me up on instagram at comics for cheap or you can email me comics for cheap at gmail.com with all your questions i can get back to you with answers such as what are turnaround times prices uh and how to do the whole process if you're unfamiliar. So, without further ado, hit that like button, subscribe, all that usual nonsense. We're about to jump in, unbox this box that I had for someone that I'm very excited about. This was a collector who sent me stuff, usually very quiet as far as a social media presence, but when he sent me this box, I don't know what I was expecting. I guess I was expecting, you know, nothing as crazy fire as what came in. And believe me, I was just so excited to receive this package and be able to work on some of these books. Uh, I'm hyping it up a little bit, I know, but... Trust me, there's some killer books in here, so let's get started. All right, well, <laughs> camera just died. Uh, you know, had to do, take care of some other stuff, wait for it to recharge and all that. But I turned the light on, changed my shirt, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Went to the gym, I had a whole day. <laughs> I completely forgot, I haven't done a video in so long that I hadn't had the camera on a charger in a minute. But regardless, let's actually jump into the books now. I feel like this video has taken me many moon to accomplish. All right, let's kick it off with, uh, this is a book that I don't know too much about, but we have The Dark Age, number two, from Red 5 Comics. It's a nice little uh, variant cover. Modern book, expected to come out 9-8. Boom! came out 9.8 white pages perfect uh it's a very pretty cover i don't know too much about it obviously it's something that this person collects so glad that i got a 9.8 though let's go on to the next one all right up next this is an iconic cover right here beautiful gorgeous you gotta love it you guys already know what it is uh steranko captain america number 111 captain america number 111 absolutely a gorgeous book iconic cover uh that's one of those ones that like you can easily recognize from across the room at a, at a convention right on the wall it's the death of the steve rogers identity uh madam hydra appearance as well this one just came out gorgeous i love the little hydra symbol down here uh at the bottom by his foot uh this one came out 5.5 with off-white pages definitely a great book to have uh over mid-grade i mean this book came out in 1969 so we're talking about what are we talking about now i feel old as fuck when you're talking about like 40 something years old 50 something years old at this point uh so awesome to have an over a mid-grade 5.5 off-white pages captain america number 111 up next i've revealed this one a couple of times for different people uh during my time here on youtube this one i will continue to tell you is almost impossible to get in a 9.8 uh that back wraparound cover you see it's a wolverine number one uh the back cover try to do it without revealing the grade uh that little shot right here because it's just so high gloss uh, with the material that they used for this book, 1988. Uh, it's so high gloss, it smudges really easy, it leaves fingerprints really easy. It's a very stubborn book as well as far as cleaning and pressing. Um, I've learned that from doing it many, many times. Uh, it's just one of those books that like, 
it's damn near impossible. Even if you think you have a 9.8, it's damn near impossible to get a 9.8. Uh, this one we were hoping, and we were hoping it was a candidate, and it uh, it came back 9.4, 9.4 white pages, still near mint copy, still very high grade, super sharp, not a flaw on it. It's gorgeous. It's just one of those books that CGC does not like to give a uh, a 982, and uh, for those reasons, like I just said, super glossy, leaves a smudge, leaves fingerprints. Uh, it's really hard to clean and press. It's a very stubborn book. Um. But yeah, 9.4, man. 9.4, white pages. Let's move on to the next one. This one a lot of people are speculating on, especially, I mean, obviously, of course, Star Wars fans. Uh, this is one that I am very behind the times on. I don't have a copy myself, but a lot of people have been telling me that I should pick up not just one copy, but multiple, multiple copies. And that is, boom, Darth Vader number three. Darth Vader number three. That is the first appearance of Dr. Aphra. Now, I know it's got multiple prints. It's got like four different print counts. This is the first printing. Uh, first appearance of Dr. Afra, Triple Zero, and BT-1, which I'm assuming are droids. I'm not a big Star Wars person myself. Uh, so that's, I mean, that's one of the main reasons I haven't picked up on this comic yet to begin with. Uh, but this one came out 9.8 white pages. Awesome, awesome grade to get on this one. Huge speculation book uh, for a lot of people. I like the back advertisement too. It's cool. Uh, but yeah, so it's one that I've just kind of kind of slept on and not looking to pick up at this point. But hey, you know, if you if you got them, hang on to them for now, for sure. Dr. Afra, Darth Vader number three, 9.8. Oh yeah. Coming up next is a king. This is a blue chip key that has been going skyrocketing. It's taking a small dip, but now it's starting to creep back up a little bit. Uh, I'm talking, of course, about giant size X-Men number one. This is what I'm talking about. This person coming out with these heavy hitting keys, man. Crazy. Giant size X-Men number one coming out in the summer of 1975. Uh, this is just the first appearance of everyone. First appearance of the first, uh, I mean, of the new X-Men, the X-Men that we know and love from the from the animated cartoon. And then, you know, the main team that continued for what like a hundred issues something crazy like that uh storm first appearance of storm nightcrawler colossus thunderbird and second full appearance of wolverine now wolverine of course there's all the debate you know is it the second full is it the third appearance blah 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 basically it's first cameo right or first cameo how they label it is hulk 180 and then hulk 181 first full and then hulk 182 the second appearance in cameo and then giant size x-men one boom 3.5 3.5 with off white to white pages killer 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 i was so happy to finally get my copy uh these giant size books with the square bound a lot harder to get in higher grade a lot harder to clean and press uh they just have so many issues and especially if they are already delicate to begin with it's very hard to improve upon uh but man this one presents extremely well it's still got some vibrant color to it and uh it's just the chipping around the edges and of course the problems and issues around the spine and the square bound uh that dropped it to that 3.5 but regardless this is a killer killer book to have in your collection all right moving on to the next one we have some more x-men for you a book that you don't see every day that's gonna be x-men number five x-men number five from may of 1964 crazy crazy this is the third appearance of magneto okay x-men one x-men four and then x-men five so third appearance of magneto second appearance of scarlet witch quicksilver mastermind and toad all of uh scarlet witch and quicksilver having appeared in x-men number four um great book to have Lots of speculation with Scarlet Witch coming up uh, for the future of the MCU and her uh, continued appearance in the new Doctor Strange movie. A lot of people speculating on X-Men and mutants in general just because of the importance they have, obviously, in Marvel and, and comics. Uh, but there's no way, right, that the MCU won't at some point include 
mutants and uh that would just mean magneto of course would have to return as well uh this being the third appearance of magneto crazy killer book to have i mean x-men number five that's a piece of history right there coming out at a 4.5 with off-white pages uh man just just under mid-grade um gorgeous it, this one is another one that presents i think i said between four and a five but i was kind of hoping it would score a little higher just because it does present so well but i just had a feeling uh with the age and just kind of how the paper looked and felt that that's where it was gonna land all right guys we are continuing on with a little more x-men a little more x-men for you this one is x-men number 13 and you can see that green label jump out at you jump out at you this is a qualified uh book because it is missing the third wrap which was an advertisement wrap so third wrap missing does not affect story so it is incomplete which is why it gets the green label it's not a completed book uh but x-men number 13 is the second appearance of the juggernaut uh it has a human torch appearance and a matt murdoch cameo i didn't know it had a matt murdoch cameo that's pretty cool um I like this cover more than X-Men 12, uh, although both of them are, I feel, inferior to, I, gosh, is it X-Men 34, 31, 30, I can't remember. There's a really cool Juggernaut cover that uh, comes later. Uh, you'll have to you'll have to let me know in the comments, but um, that one, I mean, obviously is like the ultimate Juggernaut cover, but this one I do like better than 12, which is his first appearance. Uh, this one came out a 4.0, uh, with off white to white pages, missing the advertising third wrap, uh, which does not affect story. So qualified grade right there. And last but not least more X-Men. <laughs> and this is, uh, one of the more important issues in X-Men and early X-Men. Uh, this is X-Men number 14. Yeah, X-Men number 14 from 1965. That is the first appearance of the Sentinels. Sentinels created to destroy the mutants, target mutants from their mutant gene, and seek and destroy them, essentially. Uh, so very important. Obviously, we've seen that in Days of Future Past. Uh, we've had a lot of reference to Sentinels in the X-Men animated series. Um, this one came out a 4.5 with creamed off-white pages love that cover that reaching cover is one of my favorite that bright red x-men red just works so well in the silver age red and purple man red and purple are like my favorite colors for silver age and for x-men red works for batman purple is like the greatest <laughs> but for red oh, i mean for x-men red oh my gosh so good so yeah first appearance of the sentinels stan lee story uh very essential to x-men collections for sure uh i mean that is just one of their main continued most relentless and uh terrifying enemies that they have to face um, is just the product of human you know, fear ba is basically what it is. Uh, but yeah, great book to have. Thanks guys so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate you guys uh, following through with these videos. And again, if you have any questions about cleaning, pressing, you have something maybe you want to submit, hit me up on Instagram at comics for cheap or email comics for cheap at gmail.com. And I can answer all of your questions there. As always, guys, thank you for watching and stay villainous.